in 2018 or whichever year that this message eventually will be rewatched or listened to uh, some of the practical things that we can do and scriptural things to manage our finances and if you can pull your notes out we'll take some notes and I'll go through them very quickly the first one is I would encourage every person according to scriptures also is to have an emergency fund two-thirds of people living in the United States cannot cover one thousand dollar crisis and, and a half of people, one and a half people cannot cover a $500 crisis. Your car gets towed, get a flat tire and the microwave dies and you're in depression because you can't cover $500 crisis. And one of the reasons why is because people don't set an emergency fund. You have to learn to set certain fund that is for emergencies. That doesn't mean you have to expect emergencies, but it gives you a peace of mind, especially when you're married, especially when you have kids from two to three months or at least two months or at least one month start with one month so your your things can be covered and typically people who have emergency funds tend to avoid emergencies and emergencies tend to happen to people who don't have a fund to deal with them number two live within your means live within your means means live so that your expenses do not exceed your income and if your income increase, that doesn't mean you have to increase your expenses. There has to be a breathing room between what you're making and what you're spending. When we were in North Carolina and this gentleman who God uses powerfully there, he was ministering and he was very tall and he came up to pray for me. And so he prayed for me and then he hugged me. But he was tall and very strong. He hugged me so much that and he was holding me. I couldn't breathe. And the whole prayer was about encountering God and I'm standing there and I'm, I, I can't breathe and I'm like God a few more seconds and I will encounter you <laughs> and I'm praying initially I was praying for the anointing and after that I was praying that he lets me go because he didn't realize he's holding me so tight and I appreciate the compassion and love but I can't breathe and that's how many people live with their finances is their expenses are so close to their income they have no breathing room that's why couples fight all the time many people even get sick they can't sleep and so and many times what we do is we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like and we kill the breathing room in finances it's always important to kill to keep a breathing room in your finances that means that you you, you can't spend on the level of your faith you can have you know images you want to drive a nice car wear nice clothes Wh whatever you have in your heart that's awesome keep it on your refrigerator but don't spend like you dream until you make that kind of money because otherwise you will have unnecessary troubles that will come from that breaking simple commandment or simple tip or simple advice amen number three is use wisdom in investing bible teaches us about investing investing is very important to send your money so that money can make more money for you but the problem with many people is many times they invest in what they don't understand or they invest with money they don't actually have if you have to borrow money to invest now there are cases where people honestly they just get a killer breakthrough but typically if you have to borrow money or pull money out of equity to invest that is already tells you you're doing something wrong you can't take the money that you need to feed your children and invest them. You can only invest the extra. That's why you need to save, you need to cut back so you can have money to invest. And don't invest in something that everybody is doing. Learn it for yourself. Watch videos. Get the books so that you will know what you are doing. Are you with me? Number four is avoid borrowing. Today we live in a world where everything is on payments. The hat is on payments, the socks are on payments, belt is on payments, the car is on payment, the phone is on payment, the phone case is on payment, everything is on payments. And the Bible says that the, that the person who borrows all the time is a slave to the lender. And so that means that we have to learn to avoid as much borrowing as you can. And the average in 2015, an average household credit card debt is, was $15,000. Mortgage was $171,000. The car loans were uh, $27,000. And the student loans were $48,000. Learn to save money and buy those things with cash. Cash is the king. And plus, you can enjoy your phone. You can enjoy your car better knowing that you don't have to worry about constantly making the payments. Now, it's understandable sometimes with house and certain things you can make. You have to get a loan. There's no way you can pay for it. And when you do, make it your priority to pay that off as soon as possible. Otherwise, that will swallow you up in, the, in discouragement and in anxiety. Number five, work hard. 
one of the principles of managing your finances in order to have finances you have to hustle you gotta work and you gotta work hard the bible says he who doesn't work shouldn't be eating now there are people who have disability there are people who are retired and elderly we're not talking about that but we're talking about young people who are sitting at home and only dreaming but doing absolutely nothing you can't prosper god god blesses the work of your hands not the dreams of your mind that means you gotta pu pull your hands out of your pocket and do something do something and if you're so like over here i can't do this kind of a job because that's below me humble yourself and then hustle come on somebody god is your source but the job is your resource in my house i have a hose that goes from my house and right now because of the cold weather the water in the hose got frozen so when i open the water nothing comes out it just drips why because the hose is it has ice there and many people because their habits are so bad with work god who is supplying blessing but your bad habits is the ice that actually keeps it from flowing and you only got dripping in your life if you constantly complain at your work if you show up on time instead of early that is late if you want promotion you can't come on time you're a christian you gotta be early if you want promotion you can't leave on time you gotta stay longer you gotta do better than other people you gotta educate yourself in the areas where other people get complacent and you will see the eyes the laziness the complacency that little self-entitlement bad attitude bad relationship with other employees when that ice gets broken god's grace to will flow through the hose of your job are you with me work hard next one is work smart Work smart is this, instead of buying things to compete with your colleagues, use money to buy things that will make money for you. Make money work for you. The Bible says in Matthew that one man took a talent and he hid it. That means he put all of the money just in savings. And like I mentioned, it's good to have savings, it's good to have emergency fund. But you gotta be able to be creative so you make your money work for you. But those other guys, they took their money, they took their talents and they traded with those talents and they mo made more talents. And when the master came in, he complimented them and he says, you guys were faithful. Amen. The, the, way you, the way you can do that is that sometimes, for example, instead of just buying a house, you can buy a rental property. Where you can rent one side and you end up really not paying for rent and you start looking for opportunities in which money can work for you